Midwest Whitetail is brought to you by Realtree, Hoyt, Muddy Outdoors, Fuse Accessories, Frigid Forage, Rocket Arrowheads, Scott Archery, Night and Hail Game Calls, Cabela's, TrailCamPro.com, Execute Scent Control, and Nikon. One after another, what is going camera angle, camera angle, camera angle. Okay, so what's my first interview about? Thanks for joining me on Midwest Whitetail. We're into the first week of September now, and it's getting close enough to the season where I've got to start thinking about my strategies. Now, I've got some bucks I'm going after. I showed you a couple last week, and I'll talk about another one uh, today on this episode. But right now, I've got to go down and move a couple of tree stands, put a couple of them up in this island of trees behind me. So come on along. I'll tell you more about the mission here in just a couple seconds. I can't believe that the bucks are scraping already. It's the very first part of September and the testosterone levels are coming up. And that's kind of a signal when the bucks start scraping that the testosterone's up and that's usually a, the time when they start shedding their velvet breaking up their bachelor groups, everything starts changing now. So uh, this is the first sign that the times are changing. There's another buck that I'm gonna be hunting this season that's uh, actually a deer that I hunted last season quite a bit and had a lot of encounters with him. It's this deer that I'd nicknamed the G5 buck. And I like this deer a lot and, and I'm really looking forward to hunting him. And he's got a big rack this season, but I've got an even better reason why I'm gonna look forward to hunting this deer. And that's the fact that he was very visible last season. And if he carries those uh, personality traits through into this season, now he's, he's put on probably 15 inches from last year. And he already looked, he looked really good last year uh, already. So uh, I'm excited about this deer. And this is the spot where I encountered him twice uh, last season. I was in a tree stand right here in front of me. He came in one evening in early November. I think it was around the 7th. He came in real late, right at last light. It was legal shooting time, but the camera couldn't pick him up, so I had to let him go. But he came into 15 yards and gave me an easy broadside. And then I uh, had another encounter with him at the very end of December last season in the same tree. He came from the opposite direction uh, that evening. And I was moving around in the stand, and he heard my feet uh, as I was getting into position for the shot. So we know that he frequented this area quite a bit last season. So we're, we're banking on the fact that he's going to be using the same area this season but he exposed a couple weaknesses of that stand location. The way that I've been hunting it, I was trying to find a tree that I could shoot all the way across this little neck. And really it's almost too wide to shoot all the way across anyway. But I was giving up two travel patterns from that stand that I, after all these years of, of hunting this spot, I think I've had this stand in that tree now for nine, nine hunting seasons. So I've seen a lot of deer come and go through here. And I've come to the conclusion that I need to move the stand. And that's pretty typical. Uh, most of the really, really good stands that I've got, I didn't hit them the first time in. You can usually get in the right area, you know, with some, uh, some scouting and, and studying the aerial photos and the topographical maps, but it's really hard to get into the perfect tree. There's so much local movement that you have to account for. And the, the, the step I'm gonna make here is only gonna be about a 20 yard move. And it's gonna make all the difference in the world because now the deer that are coming into the stand location and coming down this gut between this little island of trees and where my stand was uh, last season or for the last nine seasons, they're gonna be uh, on the upwind side of the stand location. And any deer coming in from behind it, like G5 buck did back in December last season, they're also gonna be on the upwind side and I can pick them off. Uh, whereas both of those movement patterns were on the downwind side of the previous tree stand. Like I said, once again, it's just a matter of playing the odds. You've got to get, uh, over, the, over the years, you've got to really study that local movement and figure out where is that one tree where I don't give anything up and I pick up you know, some of these, uh, some of these extras, extra deer movement uh, patterns that otherwise you know, I, was, I was losing. So hopefully that makes sense to you, but uh, it uh, should make all the difference in the world. This fall, any deer that comes into this part of the farm I should be able to get a shot at without running any risk of them picking up my ground scent where I went into the tree or picking up my airborne scent. 
uh, because they are, they happened to use the travel pattern that was just downwind of, of the stand that I was in. So uh, come along and join me. It's a hot day. It's pushing 90. Uh, it's going to be a lot of work, but this is something that you got to do because this is the kind of thing, it's a small move, 20 yards, no big deal, but it can make all the difference in the world. Okay, the existing stand location is right here in that little clump of trees. And what I've seen over the years is almost all the travel patterns of the deer are either down this gut or through this gap or they come in from behind and work either this way or that way. Well, when you're hunting this stand with a uh, any kind of a southwest wind, which is what I like to hunt it on, these travel patterns down here are downwind of the tree stand. Not only that, but I like to walk in using this creek and then you know, pop into this creek and walk it up and then jump into the stand. Well, so it doesn't look like much, but it's gonna make all the difference in the world to move the stand into this little island of trees right on the end. Now, with that same southwest wind, you know, I'm missing all these travel patterns of the deer coming in from behind or coming in and cutting through that little gut between the, the existing tree stand and the island. And when I come into it, now I can come along this edge and pop right in. And again, you know, it saves uh, any of the deer that are walking through this area from picking up my ground scent. So I pick up a lot. I don't give up hardly anything. It makes the shot across this gut a little bit longer. That's the only thing. And uh, haven't taken a lot of shots out into there anyway. So this might be a spot where I need to use a decoy or uh, do something else in order to bring the deer right down within 20 yards of that, within 20 yards of the end of that island. So uh, that's the plan here. And I've got a couple tree stands, so I'm going from right there to right there. Seems pretty simple. It comes out from behind to the shot of anything coming down the middle. I'm trying to visualize what that's gonna look like. Yeah, right, right here on the edge better video. This stand should give us a little bit more of a camera angle down there. Look at how easy that shot is. That's a pretty easy shot too. That's only 20 yards. You can hit this trailer, it's going to come out right here. Let's see then what wind do you hunt them on then? Because they almost have to go all the way around you when they do that. We'd have whacked G5 buck big time from that tree. Both times. That makes the most sense. We just have to live with the fact that shot out right in front of Okay, I got that job done. Looks pretty good up here. In fact, it looks even better than I was hoping that it would. There's three shooting lanes in the three spots where I expect the, that the G5 buck is going to walk past this tree. One in the back, one in the side, and one straight behind me, which goes out to the open field toward the beans. So I think if he comes through, uh, we should have a pretty good shot at him. So anyway, this spot's done. I'm excited about it. Probably won't be back here again until about the end of October. But on this next segment, we're going to visit with a hunter from uh, central, east central Iowa. A fellow named Kelly Doyle who killed a 244 inch non-typical last season. It was the biggest deer killed in, in the state of Iowa last season. So let's take a look at Kelly's buck. My name is Kelly Doyle. I'm from Walker, Iowa. During the 2010 early muzzleloader season here in Iowa, I took this non-typical deer, scored 249 and 5 eighths gross and netted 244 and 6 eighths. He's got 27 scoreable points, and uh, but he's only 16 and a half inches wide. Shot the deer October 19th, frosty Tuesday morning. Climbed up in the stand and got my antlers down. I love to rattle on a frosty morning. Didn't see anything, and then about a half hour later, I really put them together. As soon as I hung them, hung them up, I heard a deer walking, and it was coming up the trail to the south of me, so I just got the muzzle loader ready. I knew it was probably a buck coming. I didn't know how big, and uh, he was in a bunch of brush, and I couldn't tell just how big he was, and uh, got a good look at the right side of his rack, and I knew he was big enough. So I uh, shot him there, and I still didn't know how big he was until I walked right up on top of him, and uh, then I didn't know what, <clears throat> then I didn't know what to do. I, it was the biggest deer I'd ever seen. It was something that uh, 
morning I'll never forget. Jim Kendig at All Seasons Taxidermy told me that uh, he thought the deer was probably <clears throat> four and a half years old. Um, some people thought it probably couldn't weigh a little older than that, but uh, his part he thought it was by the teeth it was four and a half. These are the sheds from the deer from uh, 2009. They were found by a landowner named John Flanagan. John called me the week of the deer classic and uh, told me if I wanted him to come and get him. So I run right over and, and uh, offered to pay for him and he said he wouldn't sell them to anybody but he'd give them to me. So I want to thank John for that. And you can see he really blew up between last year and this year. He's got some busted off points but uh, he would have been a heck of a deer last year but he really grew in that one year. Thanks for joining me this week. We'll be back again next week. We've got a couple of guys from the office that are in North Dakota right now uh, looking forward to the opener, which starts the 2nd of September. So when we come back again next week, we'll have that hunt for you. We'll have some more big buck action and some more strategies. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back here next week for the next episode of Midwest Whitetail.